Okay, in this recording, we're going to uh, do an example where we develop a population balance equation for an MSMPR crystallizer to get the distribution of crystals with diameter L at time t. Okay, so here L is the crystal diameter. MSMPR means mixed suspension, mixed product removal. It basically is a CSTR for growing crystals. The crystals are in a slurry with the solvent from which they're growing. And PBE is just our population balance equation. Okay, so the volume here, we're gonna assume that it's constant. We have a constant volumetric flow rate coming in and a constant volumetric flow rate going out of the reactor. And we have a growth rate that is G. We're gonna also use the notation L dot. This is the rate at which the diameter is increasing. And this is just gonna be a constant, okay? Uh, so the final thing to account for is the, the rate of nucleation. Uh, we're gonna call that J. And we're gonna assume that all nuclei, all new nuclei are born with size L equals zero, okay? So this is our, this is our setup. Remember the ingredients in our population balance equation. We have uh, the rate at which L is changing, okay? That's our L dot term. And we have to account for the sources and sinks of new crystals at all different sizes, okay? So, so that's what's shown here. So this is the accumulation term. Uh, and this is a, uh, a term that accounts for flow in and flow out of a differential region along the L axis. So this is flowing out at L plus DL minus the flow in at L. Uh, depends on the rate at which L, L changes multiplied by the carrying capacity or the concentration of those things at those, at those different boundaries of this little region. Uh, now we have a more traditional term that we would think of as a flow out term, and that's carrying particles of size L with a concentration rho of L and T out uh, at a rate proportional to the volumetric flow rate divided by the volume of the crystallizer. Uh, so that's just written here in terms of a resonance time tau in the denominator. Okay, and then, and then the last term here is to account for the source of new particles via nucleation. We had the accumulation term, we have the flow in and flow out uh, at differentially different places along my L axis. We had our outlet stream, this was a sink, removing crystals of all sizes. Uh, and we have a source term via nucleation that is just giving birth to crystals of a specific size L equals zero, okay? So this equation is, this population balance equation is valid for all L including zero. This is a bit inconvenient to do though we just have this one special term that wouldn't exist in here if, if we uh, instead could figure out how to create a boundary value problem out of this, then we could get rid of this term and just solve the equation with those parts alone. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna reformulate this thing as a boundary value problem. And this is a, a pretty general recipe for going through and doing this. And after you've seen it a couple times, you may be able to just guess what that boundary condition looks like. Uh, okay, so let's start from scratch though. So first of all, we know that if we only look at values of L that are greater than zero, we could just omit this term. The delta function doesn't do anything anywhere other than zero. So the, the population balance equation just looks like this for all values of L that are positive. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that population balance equation, we're gonna integrate it over all values of L from zero to infinity. And when we do that, you know, some of these terms some of these terms are going to be uh, pretty easily integrated. Uh, so for example, this one over here on the right, I integrate from zero to infinity. Uh, I have the constant one over tau term. Same thing here, the L dot is a constant. Uh, I integrate over L and on the, on the left, I have a, a derivative with respect to T. After I integrate with respect to L, I no longer have the variable L. So this now becomes a regular derivative instead of a partial and uh, and this is now going to allow us to incorporate uh, the total number of nuclei, right? So the total number of nuclei that we have present in the entire reactor appears here, it appears here, and this thing is closely related to it. And we'll get back to that here in a moment. So let's give it a name. Let's call the total number of nuclei in the whole reactor is the integration of my population density with respect to L from zero to infinity. So what we have now is that the first term is just the time derivative of that total number of nuclei. The last term is minus one over tau times the total number of nuclei. This middle term is a little bit strange. We're going to 
fundamental theorem of calculus here, if I integrate the derivative, I get back the function at the two integration limits. Now out here at infinity, we don't have any crystals of infinite size in our crystallizer. There's some assumption there, uh, but it's a pretty good assumption that uh, we won't have a residence time long enough for any crystal to have grown to an infinite size. So we can cross that term off, and what we're left with is only the lower integration limit. Okay, so that one is multiplied by the L dot still. What we're going to do now is, is to combine this with something else that we independently know. Okay, so we already know that the total number of nuclei in the crystallizer changes because of nucleation events that are giving birth to nuclei, and it also changes because crystals are flowing out through the outlet stream. So if this is the concentration of crystals total, uh, then I multiply by 1 over tau, and I get the rate at which uh, crystals are exiting this reactor on a per volume basis. And now I can recognize that this term in here, the, the leftmost and rightmost terms are exactly the same as these, and if this is true, and this is also true, then J must be exactly equal to L dot times uh, rho of zero times T. So what we have derived is a boundary condition here. We have that the nucleation rate is the same as the growth rate multiplied by the concentration of nuclei of zero size. You very often have to go through this analysis to turn your population balance model into a boundary value problem before you can solve it. A little intuitive explanation for this is given here. I have a source that's coming in at a specific point. Okay, so it, these things are arriving at zero size. So right here along the axis, I have size zero, and I have the value of the, and, and these things have to balance there. There's, there's nothing else, there's nothing growing in from the left. There's only things leaving out to the right. The rate at which they leave out to the right multiplied by the concentration of those particles leaving to the right has to compensate the, the new birth uh, rate of those things coming in uh, from nucleation. Okay, so you can even do this in cases where you do have a term coming in from the right, then it will give you a jump condition instead of a boundary condition. So if you happen to have, for example, cells that divide and give birth to new cells at a specific size every single time, then instead of a boundary condition, you would get a random jump condition somewhere at that specific size uh, that would relate the, the concentration on the left, the concentration on the right, the growth rates on the left and on the right, and then there would be this new source term coming in the middle that would compensate for the discontinuity between those two terms. And what we have here is a discontinuity from absolutely nothing on the left of this to something finite on the right. Okay, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how you can recognize uh, the need for these boundary conditions and jump conditions uh, in other problems as you go forward. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna move pan back up now and uh, just take stock of where we are. So we have a population balance equation that's valid for all L greater than zero, and we have a boundary condition now, this is the thing we just derived, that says that the value of the, the population at length zero is equal to the nucleation rate divided by the growth rate. Okay, now we're gonna do our first example of a solution of one of these things. We solve this, this particular one can be solved by Laplace transforms. So we're gonna go back to this equation. I'm gonna transform the T variable into an S variable. Uh, that gives me S rho hat minus rho times L at zero. So this is my initial condition. And I'm gonna let my initial, my crystallizer initially has nothing in it. Uh, I have to nucleate before I can start crystallizing anything. And that's okay, that's built into our boundary condition. Uh, and then we have the term L dot del rho hat del L. This is the derivative of the Laplace transform, and that's equal to minus rho hat over T. Okay, so there's my, my uh, term for the flow out through the outlet of the CSTR, and, uh, and this is, of course, still accounting for the differential L range that we're looking at, the flow in and flow out of that differential range. Okay, I have to also Laplace transform my boundary condition, uh, and that becomes rho hat equals J. Uh, so J over L dot was a constant. When we Laplace transform a constant, we get one over S times the constant. Okay, so this is maybe a bit fuzzy in you guys' memory. I don't know how often you do these in your other classes, uh, but you all learn to do Laplace transforms. These are standard tabulated results for the Laplace transform of derivative and the Laplace transform of a constant. 
and that's basically all all we're doing here okay so now now what I want to do is to go back and recognize that I have a first order linear ODE in L in this equation and we can solve that uh, integration integrating factors that's what they're called okay uh, sorry I'm embarrassed that I forgot something from a math class uh, okay, so we use integrating factors and we can arrive at this solution. This is now giving us the Laplace transform domain solution. So I have rho hat of L and S is this function of S and L. And now we have to do the inversion. Okay, so I cheated. I plugged this into Mathematica to do the inversion for me. Uh, and it gives you rho of L and T is J over L dot. So my nucleation rate divided by my growth rate. Uh, and then I get e to the minus L over growth rate times time multiplied by a heavy side T minus L over the growth rate. Okay, so what does what do all these terms mean? I think it becomes easy to see when you look at the solutions. So if I row of L and T axis here going upward uh, as a function of L along the along the bottom axis. And if I look at very short times here in the dot in the dotted line, then I started out with no nuclei in the crystallizer, and if I look at only a very short time, my nuclei have not had very long to grow, so the maximum possible size is has a cutoff. You know, they haven't been in the crystallizer long enough to grow past this length. Why are there fewer of them at this long length than there are at the short length? Well, that's because as they're growing, they're they're being sucked out by the outlet flow stream. Okay, so uh, I always have this diminishing concentration of crystals as I go to larger and larger sizes. If I look at longer and longer times, then the amount of time during which they've been growing is getting longer and longer. The, the limit that they can reach, the maximum possible size, corresponding to a longer time, is moving along the bottom edge of this, uh, of this L axis. And at very long times, if we go to a long, long time, this will just become the exponential. So if I go to very long times, then all values of time are giving this heavy side function a, po a positive argument and that means it just becomes one and my distribution becomes just the exponential part and that's this that's this envelope that you see here in the distribution like this okay so that's the long time steady state solution uh, and you can get the transient and the steady state from this now in a real crystallizer not all the crystals grow at exactly the same rate and this these features will probably get somewhat rounded out like this Okay, but the solution really captures this idea that uh, you do have a, a horizon to how long you've been crystallizing and what is the maximum possible crystal size. Okay, uh, so if you wanted to account for this, of course, you would have to go a little bit farther, develop something that would look more like a Fokker-Planck equation then, and uh, probably the empirical growth rate dispersion would be something that you would use instead of actually starting from a master equation.